7.5 earthquake struck near the Drake Passage right next to Argentina and Antarctica. And right after that, we had a worldwide situation where the all of the activity now is very high on a global level. And if we look at the closest port next to where this happened at, you can see right here on the live cam, what we'll do is we'll look at the actual time elapsed because we can look at this and see a little bit of how the water is moving, how it's shaking here. But this isn't just an isolated event. The same fault, it basically ties to Cascadia in the Ring of Fire. Yes, this was definitely a fault zone that was hit while all this was happening. A 5.1 struck off Argentina right after that 7.5. You can see the global activity here, just August 22nd right here. Look at all the earthquakes that has peaked up. And we've had at least multiple five plus eight, five plus earthquakes today for magnitude 49 of them. This is all coming as this hits along the ring of fire. Now, the more interesting part here that a lot of people aren't paying attention to is the fact that USGS just today officially came out and said, we're going and we're installing new seismic stations and monitors. We're doing maintenance by Mount St. Helens this week. And we had earthquakes hit Cascadia subduction zone just today. Now, this is interesting because Mount St. Helens is right next to where these earthquakes just struck today on the 22nd of August. This is all the latest. And look right here, you can see Mount St. Helens is right next to Washington area. This is something we've been looking into because we saw them saying that also they had went to Mount Rainier, which is right next to that. And they said that it was changes in the geothermal activity. This was confirmed USGS data. Now the fault zone that was hit by the Drake passage today, this is the live feed here where the time lapse of everything happening of the closest port what we need to look at though is the specific area and why did it start to peak activity more and this is the big problem here because it's right on this fault zone and the fault zone is called shackleton fracture zone so this fracture zone is really a major situation here uh, and again like we said it runs along the bottom surface of it doesn't, but when the 5.1 hit, it runs along all the areas of the ring of fire. And as we can see right now, no tsunami warning advisory is right now issued. And that was issued earlier because this area, a lot of people don't realize, is this is a dangerous stretch. Sometimes they get 80 foot waves. Most advanced ships don't even go this way because this can really have surge come up here. And this quake was a little deep down. So we know that it's in the oceanic plates. And today, when we look at all the earthquakes that struck, it's right over there in the Cascadia subduction zone where we just had another earthquake recently this week. There was a 3.5 that hit right along this area. And here we are with another 3.9 just today. So subscribe, stay tuned. We're going to have a lot more coming. We got a lot of information that we're telling you because right along this area and the problem is, is the axial seamount, which we tapped into the live feed underneath the ocean. So this is right along that area in the one, the Fuca Ridge, where just this week we've seen a collapse happen right next to the magma chamber underneath the ocean. So the Yellowstone Observatory came out just this week and Right by the Cascadia subduction zone, we just told you the Mount St. Helens, they're now installing new seismic meters. What did they say at Yellowstone on August 1st? They've installed new meters at Black Diamond Biscuit Basin area. They're listening to the sound now. They're, they got new weather stations because you know how they've been saying that, oh, a lot of data is going offline. Well, in fact, they're, they're getting their own data, their own sound listening systems. So if we never see any information, about sound and that's what i've been telling y'all what sounds are you hearing they're acoustically tapping in and now listening a little bit deeper here as you're just tuning in we got very high seismic activity today 
and this is peaked after the 7.5 hit. Uh, so what's the more important thing that we need to look at here that's really tied into the bigger picture? They just did something that a lot of people are not looking at, and it's in the Midwest. It's also along the San Andreas Fault. You need to pay attention to this because they're using these supercomputers now to do these things. So they just did this and they said it'll be five billion worth of damage that's going to be happening. And so they did this in August. Apparently, look at this. It says the new system called the EQ Sim is currently being used to model earthquake activity along three U.S. major fault zones. The San Francisco Bay Area, Los Angeles Basin and the New Madrid region region of the eastern midwest now if you look on screen here this is the simulation they oak ridge national laboratory and this is the midwest right here this is the new madrid fault we've had the military going out there this uh just this past week we've been talking about that this is the simulated models right here they're using right now they're seeing a lot of activity and then we can go off on the west coast here the San Andreas one, they're simulating 7.5, 7.0. So you can see how quickly the activity peaking up and hitting other faults and then moving along these volcanoes that's erupted from over 600 years that Russia had erupt can also lean into the whole globalized situation. As you can see, the whole ring of fire getting lit up all today. You can see it all along these areas. From the left side of the screen to the right, from Russia coast to Japan coast to United States coast to Latin America coast. So, yeah, what a time to be alive for sure. And the more simplified version of everything that they're really not giving all the information. I want to let you see just a little bit more. This is USGS flying in to Mount St. Helens, telling us that they're installing new seismic monitors. And the question is, what more could be happening behind this? And I'm going to be definitely watching that to give you much more information on that. So you want to stay updated, stay tuned, stay subscribed, because the fault that was hit is definitely an old fault. But if we go a little bit further along these lines where they're talking about all the current situations and we look at this, these are plate boundaries. And we told you that the magma has been shifting along the plate boundaries all the way up from Latin America to United States, and we've seen the magma ships. The collapsing chamber in the ocean of the actual seamount is another issue that we're looking at as well. So because uh, the live data feed, when we looked at it, they they have it on for two hours a day, and then they shut it off, you know, turn it back on, and they only have the feed on twice per month for the actual seamount. So it's like two dates. It's, it's the 20th of each month that I have to log in and let all of you see. And then the other one is around, I believe, the 10th. And this is a confirmed data from Washington uh, University who goes out and looks at this. So the real big picture here is what is happening more under these subducting plates. And we need more live models of that happening. So we're looking at this actively at every given moment to make sure you're alerted and aware because the 7.5 was just not the normal average thing. And then it's next to Antarctica, which also they're talking about a lot of the glacial melts, which we've seen in Alaska happen. So Alaska getting shaken too as well is not a good thing. And how all the glaciers, it just started coming up and it was this high tsunami that started from a, a glacier melting. So this is another thing that we're going to be uh, watching as well because Mount St. Helens is just one part of the volcanoes along the Cascade Range that is affected by this activity. So when we see all this happening, it's not just a normal day. and We can just go about our own way and say, oh, well, that's that's in another area. It really doesn't matter. It matters a lot. And so, again, if you didn't know about a lot of these situations and this everything that we're giving here is very unique. Another thing, though, if you just came here, you just tune in, give us a like, thumbs up. And um, volcano collapse opens underwater. We go into the full magma chambers and everything else. I'm going to drop that link in the live chat and you'll see a video on the left hand side right as this ends. And let me tell you, we're getting out the critical narratives that a lot of people aren't seeing themselves. Uh, don't let them hide the videos from you, though, because I promise you a lot of people was not seeing that. And this is critical to the survivability 
and everything else that we've got. So the watch zones are going to be obviously along the West Coast. We're going to be looking at the Midwest and we're also going to even look at the East Coast. We got all that coming up. You want to stay around for all this action that is basically 